Hello everyone, and welcome to our newest Sunday School series, Simply Loved, where we learn something pretty important. And it's pretty simple too. God loves us. God always loves us. Now we're going to explore a story from the Bible that helps us to understand just how much God loves us. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Have you heard that before? Including lions and parakeets of all things. That's pretty cool. We can read about them and other things that God made in the very first book of the Bible. The very first book of the Bible is Genesis. And the word Genesis means beginning. Genesis is the beginning of God's love for us. So we're going to read from Genesis together, and we're going to talk about all the wonderful things that God made, starting in chapter 1. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was without shape or form. It was dark over the deep sea, and God's wind swept over the waters. God said, let there be light, and so light appeared. God saw how good the light was. God separated the light from the darkness. God named the light day and the darkness night. There was evening, and there was morning that first day. So on the very first day, God created light and dark. Pretty opposite things, huh? But you know what? I'm grateful for light, because without light, I wouldn't be able to read the scripture right now that I'm reading to you. I, I wouldn't be able to probably record this video for you either, because I wouldn't be able to see to hit the buttons or to know when to turn it off. And you wouldn't be able to see this video in the dark, maybe if you have a backlit screen, of course, but without light, it makes it really hard to do things. And yet, I love the dark, too. Sitting in silence in the dark at night, so peaceful. And when I'm getting ready for bed, man, I don't know about you, but if you're not quite tired yet and all the lights are still on, woof, it's pretty hard to fall asleep. At least I think so. So I'm grateful for the dark just as much as I am for the light. And then God put a dome in the middle of the waters to separate the waters from each other. God made the dome and separated the waters under the dome from the waters above the dome. And that dome, God named sky. And there was evening and morning on the second day. So the sky was the very next thing. A man, I don't know if you've ever been on a plane before, but... Soaring through the clouds above God's creation is an amazing thing. Makes me jealous for birds. I guess birds haven't been made yet, huh? Huh, I wonder when God gets around to making birds. Well, I guess they do have to have a sky to fly around in first. So maybe that's coming next. Let's find out together. God said, let the waters under the sky come together into one place so that the dry land can appear. And that's what happened. God named the dry land earth, and he named the gathered waters seas. Then God said, let the earth grow plant life, plants yielding seeds and fruit trees, bearing fruit with seeds inside it, each according to its kind. And God saw how good it was. And there was evening and morning the third day. So now we have plants. But first we had to have land for those plants to grow in, right? And I guess now that we have plants, maybe we'll have something to come along and eat those plants. Crazy how all of this seems to be going in order, isn't it? Next, God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. There will be lights in the dome of the sky to shine on the earth, and that's what happened. God made the stars in two great lights, the larger light to rule over the day, the sun, and the smaller light to rule over the night, what we call the moon. God put them in the dome of the sky to shine on earth, to rule over day and night, and separate the light from the darkness. And God saw how good it was. And there was evening and morning on the fourth day. So what comes next? God said, let the water swarm with living things and let birds fly above the earth up in the dome of the sky. God created the great sea animals and all the tiny living things that swarm in the waters, each according to its kind, and all the winged birds according to its kind. And God saw how good it was. And there was evening and morning on the fifth day. God created the creatures of the sea and the creatures of the sky after the land and the sky were there for them to be in. That's amazing. Again, this pattern that we see emerging 
in the way God made all the things. And then God said, let the earth produce every kind of living thing, livestock, crawling things, and wildlife. And that's what happened. God made every kind of wildlife, every kind of livestock, and every kind of creature that crawls on the ground. And God saw how good it was. And you'll have to wait till next week for the next thing God made. But you know what? Isn't it just crazy? We have all of these animals in the world. I know that I personally have animals at home. I have two cats, and I know some of you out there have dogs, cats, probably some hamsters, some bunnies, lizards maybe. You all have all sorts of pets at home. You might even have birds at home. And you know what? It's pretty crazy that God made everything we need to survive and enjoy life on this earth. And God said after everything, he said it was good. God made sure all those things that were made were good and made just for us. That's awesome. Creation shows us God's love, that God always loves us. We see God's love everywhere. God gives us everything we need to live. And you know, it's funny. God created this special place for us. But I bet you have special places in your life, too, that were created just for you. Maybe your room is your own special place, or maybe you have that one special place in your room, like your bed or your desk, or maybe a little reading corner with a bean bag. You know, if you, you have time, if you maybe have a pen and paper handy, maybe draw that space. I know for me, my space would have a bookcase with bookshelves and all sorts of books on it. That's what my office looks like. It's my own little space. I have my books and I have my little desk chair. It, I'm not a great artist, if you could even see that. <laughs> but uh, that's my own special space. And I bet you have your special spaces like that too. Maybe your teacher, if you're back in the classroom, has a special desk for you. Maybe your grandparent has a special space that you get to stay when you're at their house that nobody else gets to stay in. Maybe you have a special place you made out in the world, like a tree fort in your backyard, or just somewhere you like to go that's just for you. People in our lives have created a special place for us, and God made a special place for us. God put everything in order and gave us the things we'd need because God loves us. God always loves us. And we're going to talk about how God purposefully designed not just the world for us to live in, but made us next week. Thanks for watching.